it's a very broad term and I think would have um, um, uh, several examples uh, uh, that are um, on the verge of uh, various distances uh, that are being uh, uh, closed as uh, technologies converge. I think we would have uh, tremendous sophistication ha uh, in, in technologies from the molecular level, thank to, thanks to the uh, uh, biochemists, uh, the biomedical researchers. We would uh, even have increasing control over the machinery of life. You know, that's an incredibly important technology that I think will transform medicine. Uh, in fact, um, uh, that would um, uh, be uh, somewhat less control as you as you look on the inorganic side of matter. Surprisingly, uh, there might be some gaps, but if you get into my home space, which would be the nano uh, world, nanotechnology world, uh, there would be the ability to do patterning and and uh, uh, increasingly three dimensional structures, uh, and that uh, was uh, the technology arose for the microelectronics industry and, and spun into various other disciplines. And I'm using these two as an example. Is there a convergence between a, a biomolecular technology and this technology that would be uh, uh, able to pattern all sorts of uh, inorganic structures? Already, we would have examples uh, of uh, companies uh, uh, and, uh, uh, well, academic research spawning companies uh, around the country uh, uh, harnessing the nanotechnology in the service of uh, uh, something like DNA sequencing. And so these would be uh, uh, technologies that would begin to mix the two. Uh, and I think that would be the uh, definition of convergence. And of course the demand for DNA sequencing would be um, uh, extremely strong uh, in, in, uh, for human curiosity and science, but also potentially it would have um, major medical impacts. It's been a major uh, one of the great successes of uh, federal research funding over the last uh, uh, quarter century, uh, the Human Genome Project and, and so on. So, so I think um, uh, uh, that, that would be just an example. There would be several. I, I think the, um, I would like to point out that it's, uh, technology doesn't exist uh, without its application and that uh, if, you, if you can't develop these and, and leave them on the shelf, they're developed by people in, uh, in societies who have a compelling need. And so sometimes I, I think the technology convergence will follow the identification of the need. So the NNIN is the uh, National Nanotechnology Infrastructure Network, which was founded in uh, 2004 and is um, uh, scheduled to wrap up next year. There is a call for proposals for a next generation NNIN. And, and what this is, is currently 14 uh, research universities with facilities in, in various uh, types of nanofabrication uh, that would be networked and uh, through the NSF support open uh, uh, facilities so that uh, uh, our, our focus in fact uh, would be uh, at Stanford, we have the Stanford Nanofabrication Facility. We would have a substantial percentage of our users from local industry small companies uh, to large companies, as well as other universities. And this um, uh, would be a, uh, an interesting experiment in sharing very expensive infrastructure. Uh, we um, uh, are, are sometimes some of those important work that happens is not by Stanford people. I think it, uh, you, you may wonder why universities would be interested in this. I think the experience is the community that's created is larger than the university. And being uh, in the San Francisco Bay Area, we would have a tremendous uh, hotbed of, of startups, some from our own students, some from uh, uh, surrounding schools, and, and uh, the uh, mixing of these people in the uh, nanofab uh, would often lead to innovations uh, that would um, uh, be, be um, uh, uh, unexpected and wouldn't have happened if we had a narrower uh, uh, user base. Uh, so these are really like open kitchens where you can cook various types of cuisine and uh, in the nano scale and uh, the applications would range uh, from uh, certainly in our facility on the order of a quarter of the projects are related to some sort of medical application and uh, on the other end there would be a tremendous amount of interest in green energy of various types and a large number of projects in energy applications and of course in the middle we would have 
uh, photonics, um, microelectromechanical systems, uh, which is my research area, and, and electronics, especially uh, efforts in memory and energy efficiency uh, in electronics. The technologies created for one end often mix with those in the other. Uh, one of our, our uh, my colleagues, Yelena Vukovic, uh, collaborating with Sam Gam here in the medical school, um, uh, recently reported a uh, device that's a probe for monitoring prostate cancer. It's an extreme uh, uh, triumph of nanofabrication, elegant uh, photonic engineering. Ultimately, it's a, a tiny probe that lives in the cell, the cancer cell, monitors it while it's dividing, and potentially could lead to a personalized, much more effective uh, uh, therapy. Uh, and so that would, would have been unimaginable or unimagined uh, 20 years ago uh, that all of this uh, technology that was originally developed for the semiconductor industry would be uh, turned to such a new application and actually um, with much of the biochemistry added in as well. Uh, so it's, a, a very, it's a, an example of a converged uh, uh, technology. I think the, um, um, uh, there would be many routes to this dimensional scale of 10 to 100 nanometers uh, that would be uh, part of the uh, NSF's uh, uh, accepted definition of the uh, 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 length scales involved in nano. I, I think the, um, uh, the chemists and biochemists would view these as very large structures that they would synthesize and uh, you would have nanoparticles and other nanostructures uh, that, are, that are made in a, uh, a chemical synthesis way. That's not the focus of the current SNF. We have added a new uh, facility to better support that work. Um, on the other end, uh, the, the um, uh, people using lithographic techniques would view this as a, a challenge to shrink patterns uh, to that dimensional scale. The uh, uh, complex systems that we would like to fabricate often involve um, uh, uh, three-dimensional structures and uh, could be envisioned harnessing both techniques and that I think is a grand challenge in, in convergence to find ways to uh, harness both the chemical approach and the uh, machining approach as it were uh, to build things. We don't have the templates and the um, our machine shop is not set up to do that and there are people around the, uh, the world working on, uh, on efforts to converge those technologies. And I think, again, if an application emerges that would uh, allow a, a very substantial amount of work, other people would hitchhike on that, and then we would begin to build a more powerful uh, technology based on the initial application. Well, I think it, it would, um, uh, I think the, the, the topic of uh, communication uh, that you have people who often um, uh, don't get together. Uh, they um, would move in separate worlds, whether they're on the, uh, in the medical school or sciences, chemistry, biology, versus the uh, physical side, the engineers and uh, phys physics, applied physics. Uh, uh, getting uh, the community together uh, is something that um, uh, uh, that act in itself would tend to remove barriers as you begin to uh, uh, cross-pollinate each other's groups and often it's not the faculty it would be their graduate students who are much more open and um, uh, uh, willing to uh, maybe willing and able to embrace and learn a tremendous amount of material on the other side and and uh, I think we we would um, have a, um, a group of people who haven't been engaged yet I've had recent discussion at our computer science department's faculty lunch that um, I think the, the computer scientists have a tremendous amount to offer. Exactly how uh, they would engage uh, is um, uh, at this point unclear. I think in some ways the, the uh, way we think about the synthetic nanofabrication or these chemical processes, we don't have the vocabulary, the, the design vocabulary to think about how to use them. And so everything is excruciatingly difficult, requires a PhD in chemistry, to capture that in a way that um, the rest of us <laughs> can, uh, can harness, um, I, I think is, a, is, is the sort of breakthrough that would dissolve barriers. And so a, um, uh, a um, uh, opportunity to inject their very different way of thinking uh, uh, into 
uh, this mix, I think, would be extremely important at an early stage. Stanford, we have a uh, design school that is uh, uh, a, uh, a very different atmosphere of, of people who would be um, uh, putting into practice as well as developing the principles of design. I think um, uh, we don't have the um, uh, 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 even the uh, beginning of uh, uh, an understanding of what the uh, principles are for design. Uh, but I think in this day and age they would be embedded in the software. The history of the lith lith lithography and etching that uh, underlied uh, and, and created the electronics revolution, uh, computer science played a huge role in taming the complexity of that uh, enterprise, which would be uh, very quickly uh, spun beyond the ability of humans. And, um, and yet it was captured with, with some difficulty, it was translated and, and became something that was, uh, uh, you could teach and people can learn and, and not have multiple PhDs. And we need lots of people to <laughs> participate in this. Uh, sometimes those people think uh, in very creative ways uh, because they, they can run with the, the uh, the design principles, and so I think that um, would be very exciting to see that happen, and uh, uh, and the sooner the better. Well, I, I think it's um, um, you you can't create technology in the abstract. Um, uh, if you uh, uh, think of the history of technologies, uh, they're developed for very uh, specific uh, applications, and and. Uh, uh, refined and then propagate outside of those applications once they're perfected. And if, if there isn't the push to actually get the, out, uh, the outcome of the project should be in the hands of people using it. So it, it breaks, it fails, and you learn how to do it better. And in fact that means um, a, um, uh, an application has to be identified, whether it's inexpensive solar or some sort of new way to um, uh, make biomolecules uh, and, and uh, uh, some sort of rapid assessment of cancer, if that's a grand challenge. There could be a set of technologies uh, uh, developed that are very narrowly focused on that, but in fact uh, would be perfected and then uh, hijacked by others for uh, other interesting things, possibly completely removed from that field. So it's a um, uh, uh, we're, we're very near the capital of, ven of venture capital in the United States. It's uh, only a, about a, a couple of kilometers away within bicycling distance. And they would be uh, some very bright people wrestling on a nearer term uh, investment. I think strategically this is, it, it is a bit longer term. But I think um, uh, the challenge would be how do we perhaps get input on what what that um, uh, we don't have uh, enough resources or people uh, energy to focus to, to simply do too many narrow applications so to, to select the ones that would be the most likely uh, to con to achieve convergence would be very important and an art form and probably not a uh, an outcome you could guarantee uh, it's a reality of uh, research um, so so I think it's that um, uh, uh, not being satisfied with anything less than a, a truly functioning, useful technology in the application. That will be the hardest thing, and some of the technologies developed to make that uh, reliable operation will be extremely valuable in the convergence. And if you only go 80% of the way there, where it's left as an academic project, you, you simply uh, don't have the credibility, almost, it would be a way of, 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 uh, of putting it. Um, and, and I might add, that means uh, uh, such uh, mundane <laughs> aspects of the product surviving outside of the lab, being surviving in, in shipping and shelf life, and, and uh, one other aspect I'll bring up um, uh, is uh, its um, uh, uh, integration with the environment. Uh, product should be designed from a life cycle point of view, even technology should be designed that way. Is there one of the convergent technology candidates that would be more likely to address this um, recycling of, of uh, raw materials at all scales? Possibly it's designed to be torn apart, not like a circuit board, but maybe in a much finer building block model to build uh, so that you dissolve the product, harness the 
expensive little uh, uh, fragments, nano components, and reuse them in another product. That um, kind of innovation on the environmental implications, I think, would be important. Uh, we could end up developing a wonderful technology that uh, would be a route to future Superfund sites if we're not too careful. <laughs> Don't quote me on that, or at least uh, at least create a, uh, a large amount of, uh, of challenges on that. Maybe we can actually think of those at the beginning, put the resources and technologies that might lead to breakthroughs on that end. So, so not define it just through the uh, usefulness of the product, but the end game of the of the product. Where does it go? Uh, how is it disposed? Uh, uh, is it recyclable, resorbable? And, and there are people beginning to uh, tackle those. Um, let's see, I think lastly, the um, uh, uh, mentioned before, the human factors in, in, uh, in convergent technologies. I think the, the uh, chemistry of the disciplines, the, even the people involved, uh, the uh, social scientists could view the experience as, as, as worthy of their, their study, but possibly their um, uh, 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 perspectives would be important at the beginning to, to select the convergence technology, select the way it's being approached. It could be, in fact, an experiment that could uh, be very productive uh, from, a, uh, um, uh, uh, from their disciplines. So, so I think that the uh, uh, it's not simply a, uh, a purely technical decision. I think the um, engineering of the boundary conditions uh, uh, around uh, such a, an initiative would be very important. And I think there would be a lot to contribute from that uh, end of science.